Why don't you sing? Do you know how it goes at all? Softly the evening vespers, hello the closing day. I'd rather hear your voice. I'd rather hear the your voice. <laughs> I think Michael loves music, and I think Michael loves people, and I think Michael loves God. And when he writes or plays or sings, those three things are at the heart of what he's doing. You know, when you watch him play, just his demeanor, his body language that speaks prayer, I feel like that is just who he is. He has great relationships with, with people all over campus. He is able to play in such a way that, that lifts people up and, and brings students into a higher level of music making without having to grandstand or demonstrate how good or smart he is. He'll get an idea and he'll stay up all night, you know, writing it and perfecting it and making sure that it is where it should be. Where does my inspiration come from is one of those tough questions. I would say it's more of a life perspective. So my belief in God and my parents, uh, friendships. I think that's why so many of my pieces are geared towards others because they're what inspire me to reflect what I see in them. He's an amazingly intuitive musician. And I think that that comes from a process of using music as a reflective tool. I think that's, that is his prayer. It's his gift to God, and he knows that God gifted him, and he wants to return that gift. I talk a lot with students about having tools at their disposal, how they deal with not just the ups in life, but the down parts of life. One of the tools I use is going to music, just like someone might journal their thoughts what I love about Michael's music is the very same thing that I love about Michael as a person, is when you hear it, it's like an open invitation. Actually. Yeah, D major. My compositional process in general is a little unorthodox for a classically trained musician. I usually try to start as most songwriters do with the text. It doesn't matter so much if it's perfect process, it matters getting the creativity in there and getting to the end result. Because yeah. it's already in my head what I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh... Then the next part would be writing out the chords, which is the most fun part for me. So this piece of paper that was once blank, now it has all the words, a bunch of scratches out, has all of the note names, a bunch more scratches out, and now it has all these chords, and so it's this big mess of ideas. How he can sit down and write a song, and, and even those are oftentimes holy and prayerful, so you see that combination of his holiness and his musical talent come together. Sweetly his tones are falling, come to the throne and the more that you listen to the song, the more Michael you hear in the song. And the, the deeper you're able to connect to it because of that. There's some beautiful imagery in this song. I have this beautiful view in my office. So I see the shadows of the sunset on the other side of my office. So there's these shadows that go over central campus and it's just gorgeous to see the colors there. And I want to connect it to nature. I want it to be closing day, this continuous end of day. It's not as big of a deal if it just happens every single day that the sun's gonna set, but it's the closing day, the final day, the last one we get. And so that's one thing that very early in the piece reminds me of what's really important. 
the words, the idea of come to the throne is maybe part of coming to, to God as someone who is broken in need of forgiveness and doesn't exactly fit in the cord until Christ makes it so. That is exactly the kind of subtlety that I have come to expect from Michael's music making, like writ large, uh, and, I, and I think it's like really um, apparent in this song. Come to the throne and pray. impacting my life every day, every week, then it's something I can be proud of. It's something that has changed me. Each person can have their own interpretation of this poem, of this song even, but for me that's what stands out. What is your heaven on earth in a sense? Heaven is ineffable, it's indescribable, and yet we try to depict it in art and music, something that by definition we can't ever truly know or fully know until we get there. It's just an allusion to what heaven or what the reward will be at the end of our life, at the closing day. Jesus loves you, it will bring a retreat. 